since 2016, back-to-back -back bowl game appearances. And a big reason why they had a lot of success was because of an offense that was able to put up 42, 400 career rushing yards. Devontae Williams, 22 total touchdowns, setting a single-season program record with 132 points. So there are some big shoes to fill. But, you know, you talk to Phil Longo, offensive coordinator. You talk to Mac Brown. There's a level of, of confidence here because of the number of guys that are going to be available to step in, including some not only young guys, but a grad, but a tr grad transfer as well from the SEC. Yeah, and you heard Coach Longo yesterday talk about Ty Chandler, a guy that leads the group. Uh, Coach said he loves his personality, he works hard, and he learned the offense really quickly. And for a guy that's had a lot of football in the SEC, that's a good thing to think. So once you get into ACC play, like Coach Brown said, he doesn't see him flinching or getting nervous about his opponents. He's done it at a high clip in the SEC, so he can certainly do it here against these ACC defenses. There's you Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. Enjoyed our conversation with him. He's got a lot of optimism about this upcoming season. There's Ty Chandler looking forward to watching him today. The grad transfer from Tennessee, fifth most all-purpose yards in school history at Tennessee. There, we, we don't know if he's going to be the bell cow in this offense, but he's got a really good shot of doing that in the backfield, EJ. He definitely does, Matt. And you heard Coach again say that it might be a, a situation where they win by committee at running back. You know, they're not necessarily expecting a guy to have, you know, 25, 30 carries a game, considering you have a great quarterback to be able to throw to some good receivers. But he's certainly somebody that can take the edge off. He can also catch the ball at the backfield. You know, I think that goes without saying he's a good uh, pass catcher. But he has some other running backs in the, in the, in the, the room that can make plays, too. You talk about British Books and uh, British Brooks, excuse me, and Josh Henderson, guys that played a little bit last year whenever Carter and Williams were out. Elijah Green, DJ Jones, Caleb Hood. They're also going to have Camaro Edmonds coming in over the summer. So that running back room is going to be loaded. Much more here as we take a look at a glimpse of the future of North Carolina football. First rule of special ops, be aware of your surroundings. Complete visual clarity because survival, safety, and success depend on it. These special optics give you the power to see all your surroundings. They're HD vision, special ops. Most sunglasses just make things darker, and in a tactical situation, that can be deadly. Inspired by the needs of our men and women in uniform, special ops lets you do things normal sunglasses just can't do. You see your surroundings in high definition with color, contrast, and clarity so sharp, you'll never want to be without them. And HD vision special. Yeah, and Matt, there's always things to work on. You know, I went back and watched the Texas A&M tape. Right here, you're going to see a missed throw, and I really think Sam was probably throwing this one away. But had Sam got this ball off a hitch or two sooner, I think he can certainly make that throw. I've seen him do it before. Now this next one, you talk about the footwork, and Jim Nagy kind of hit it. You know, Sam sometimes gets back in the pocket and he hops around. He's going to take three hitches on a really simple stop route in the slot. Would have been an easy first down conversion there for Carolina to continue to try to get a touchdown. But this is what he does great, Matt. He ad-libs, he gets out the pocket, and you're gonna see him direct Josh Downs here all the way down the field for a huge bomb. And this is what he brings. I mean, this is why this guy's throwing 68 touchdowns in his first two seasons. The cool, the cool part is Coach Longo is completely fine with the way that Sam plays as far as his footwork. But these five players. What about between years two and three here? And there's kind of a, a running joke. You set the expectations pretty high early and you met them, but the expectations are only going up from here, even with an offense that put up 42 a game last year. And, and look, Coach Brown hit it head on, Matt. He said he wants the expectations to be high. He wants the Carolina faithful and those fans at home to be upset when they lose games, especially games they're supposed to win. And look, that's how you create a winning atmosphere, a winning program. And again, talking about the offense with, what, four guys going on to the NFL, that's about 4,000 yards of production that they're losing. So Coach Longo said, we're not going to change the scheme. We're just going to change the emphasis. We might have to run the ball by committee, have two or three running backs go out there and be the bell cows instead of those two last year. And then obviously that receiver, who's going to step up and be the big play receiver that Sam Howe had for the past two seasons. It's going to be a great opportunity today to see some of these new faces that will be uh, splashing on college football Saturdays coming up in the fall as we get a little bit more closer to normal here in 2021. There you so you look at Sam Howell, Phil Longo, the offensive coordinator. We'll see how much Sam Howell plays here. It could be series-based, maybe two, maybe three series here. 
Depends on the number of plays per series, but we shall see again. Offense in blue, defense in white. And we're about to get underway here with Sam Howell. You can hear some of the rain. Drizzling been kind of a wet day in the state of North Carolina. The fake handoff. And now going deep down the right side. And that one is in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Josh Downs, who really splashed onto the scene last season and took advantage of some early departures in that bowl game and had a couple of touchdowns against a &M. He did, Matt. And to me, I love the way that Coach Longo used him. He lined him up in the backfield sometimes, would motion him out, let him get in the slot. And that creates uh, a mismatch with the safety. And that's exactly what happened in that Texas A&M game. So I know he'll get that ball back and get another opportunity. Ty Chandler to his left does get the handoff. The grad transfer from Tennessee with a few yards there. He can do it all. He's fast. He can catch. We mentioned the top five all-purpose yards there for Tennessee during his time there. And he comes over to North Carolina with some big shoes to fill, and he might be the guy to fill it. Yeah, he certainly can be the guy to fill it. I mean, you talk about a guy that's battle-tested in the SEC. And though the ACC has some great defenses, we know the SEC has some really good ones too. Third down at five here from the 39. How under some pressure, and he's not going to be brought down, but he is sacked. That will go as a sack. That is Dez Evans, the sophomore out of Sanford, North Carolina, Lee County High School. Played about 180 snaps last year. They thought he was ready. He was kind of ready, but he's going to be ready coming up in his sophomore season. Yeah, and Matt, look, this guy's a former five-star athlete. So, I mean, look, they have four and five-star guys all over the field. It's really good. You don't want your right tackle to get beat, but look, this is Carolina versus Carolina right here. <laughs> so if you can get your DNs getting out there, getting active against the quarterback, that's going to be a great thing. I love what Coach Pavin said. I have high, uh, high opinion of what he'll be for us in the next couple of seasons. One of those top recruits, not only top recruit, but top in-state recruits, which has been a huge deal for this program under Mac Brown. So now we get a chance to look at Jacoby Criswell. In that competition for the backup quarterback job. It hands off to Caleb Hood, the freshman out of Rockingham, North Carolina, Richmond Senior High School. Another one of those young running backs, gained at 12, gonna have an opportunity here this fall. Yeah, he did a great job of hitting the hole, bounced around, nice little jump cut. And I'm going to tell you what, Matt, this guy doesn't look like a freshman. This guy looks like he might be a junior or a senior body-wise, and that's exactly what the coach said. He's 5'11", 230, uh, a guy that played quarterback in high school, so we know he's good with the football in his hands. Three prep seasons, 6,300 passing yards, 59 touchdowns. Chriswell, though, with the keeper across the 50. They'll blow that whistle there as the sophomore out of Arkansas with the carry, give him a gain of eight. And this is essentially his first spring as well after missing last spring with, uh, as most <laughs> schools did with COVID. Yeah, and Coach Longo spoke extremely high about Jacoby Criswell. He said he was actually recruiting him at Ole Miss and he was able to get him over at UNC once he got the job here. There's Criswell with Hood to his left. Criswell over the middle, nearly caught, but dropped. Caleb Hood out of the backfield. And that'll bring up a third down, third down and three. Now, Kobe Criswell, Gatorade Player of the Year in Arkansas. Go ahead, EJ. With the rain, I think what, what a better time to practice this. Obviously, you don't want rain in the regular season, but these guys are going to have to practice catching the football in wet conditions. Criswell under some pressure, and that'll go down as a sack as well. And give that one to Kadri Jackson, the junior out of Windermere, Florida. Mac Brown's team will take a quick break. Defense showing itself here in the early going of the spring game. At touchofmodern.com. Softball coming your way on Sunday. Florida State and Louisville ACC Network also streaming live on the ESPN app. Also streaming live right now. The spring game. North Carolina 
in Chapel Hill. We saw E.J. Manuel, the defense coming up big in those first couple of series with two sacks, both coming on third down. Des Evans and Kadri Jackson and Mac Brown, Jay Bateman, both like what they have in terms of able bodies and depth coming in the defensive line. Yeah, depth was the, the big key word that the coaches brought up in our production meeting yesterday. You obviously saw it right there with Evans and Jackson pretty much coming up with uh, two sacks apiece right here. So the offense wants to clean that up. you got to get the O-line to go ahead and start redirecting and pick up some of these blitz packages. Sam Howell is complete there. To Antoine Green, great to see him back, the senior out of Rockledge. High school in Florida had that severe leg injury as a freshman at Syracuse broke his leg back he's been healthy for a couple years but just getting back maybe to what they thought he could be gain of 12 there that's DJ Jones on the carry the sophomore out of Fayetteville North Carolina Second down and six coming up here for Sam Howell and this North Carolina offense. DJ Jones remains in the backfield, takes the handoff and stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Javari Ritzy, the freshman. We talked to Mac Brown before the game. He said he was all fired up before the game for what is technically his first college game. Yeah, and Javari Ritz, he's actually a teammate of Ra Ra Dilworth. So these two guys, the coaches lit up when we asked about him. They said he, he was probably the most impactful and actually most improved player throughout the spring. So it's really good to see him get in there and get a quick tackle for loss. How looking deep that one intended for oh, Antoine Green, but we do have some flags on the play. Back to that previous play. Just this opportunity for some of these young guys to get in there. Ritzy, one of those 12 early enrollees, uh, making his presence known early, it was a shot put in high school as well. And he was fired up to go today, one of the top defensive ends in the class of 2020, 2021. Yeah, to remember, Coach Bateman was just so excited about having depth at the defensive line position because that allows him to do more, bring more blitz packages, sub guys out, and keep them fresh. That one intended for Green. You saw defensive back contesting there. There's certainly a lot of confidence in this secondary as well in terms of the amount of depth, EJ, that they are going to be able to provide. A lot of interchangeable parts here for Jay Bateman's defense. Yeah, a, a ton of interchangeable parts. Guys that really are young, didn't get a lot of experience last year, but certainly could fill in if those starters either go down with the injury or they're just simply tired. <laughs> Good stop. Jones on the carry and stopped right up the middle on a fourth down play, and he's not going to get it. Yeah. And in a spring game, you just want to get into a rhythm offensively. And sometimes it's so hard to do because, I'll be honest, the defense knows your calls. You've been practicing against them 13, 14 times the past, what, four weeks. So, you know, obviously the defense should have the leg up. But I do think eventually we'll see a big play for this offense. Cameron Kelly, 55 tackles last year. Had a forced fumble, started five games last year. Transferred from Auburn a couple of seasons ago. So three possessions, a couple of first downs here for the offense. And now we get a chance to see quarterback Drake May, freshman out of Myers Park High School in Charlotte, North Carolina. Top 10 pocket passer quarterback, top 50 prospect in his recruiting class. Here's Drake May going down the right side. That one incomplete, intended for fellow freshman Kobe Pesor. On the play there, Jaquarius Conley. Yeah, and, and Drake May is a big time recruit, 6'5, 220. Uh, you know, obviously will fill in his frame as he continues to grow and get older there as a quarterback at Carolina. His father uh, actually played uh, football at Carolina, and his brother, we all know, Luke May, basketball, the big shot champ, had him on our show on in play. So it's pretty cool to see this guy get his opportunity today. 
Yeah, his brother Cole won a national championship at Florida in baseball, so maybe Drake will be able to do that as well here at North Carolina. On the carry is Josh Henderson. Again, these running backs coming at you in waves. That's a gain of six for the Tar Heels. Josh Henderson, just 18 carries last year, but this brings some leadership to that running back room along with British Brooks. Certainly brings some leadership, Matt. I mean, this guy, uh, when his number is called, he comes in and he does a great job. Always good to have a young quarterback in with a veteran running back as well. It's made to his tight end, Mary Morales. Mentioned perhaps the importance of the tight end position this year. Minimal gain. That'll bring up a fourth down. We'll see what Mac Brown decides to do. Fourth down and two. You know, if you don't get it, this ball goes over to Carolina. So <laughs> it's a win-win, Matt. It's a win-win. Big one. <laughs> Drake May on fourth down and two. Nice. And the handoff, and he has the first down. And that is to the aforementioned Josh Henderson. Yeah, and look, you're going to see the offensive line do a great job. Big 52, Jonathan Adorno coming out and kicking out the linebacker right there, pretty much opening that hole up for Josh Henderson to go out and get the first down on four. You mentioned that offensive line. Everybody's back from last year. Just the continuity on that unit is going to work wonders here for this team. Henderson working his way up the middle. And Josh Henderson with a gain of 10, another first down. And once again, Matt, watch the offensive lineman, 54, Chance Carroll, doing a great job of kicking out the linebackers. And look, that's really what Coach Longo's run game is based off of. Agile linemen that can come off and, and, and run gap schemes and do a great job of zone blocking. Henderson again working his way, minimal gain. He's got three carries for 24 yards. Now it's four for 27. But that offensive line, we talked to Coach Longo, he said, look, we've got seven or eight guys and other guys that could fight for that number nine spot. So just that depth on the O-line, you never know when injuries are going to come up. Guys need a blow. And they certainly have some depth on that unit. Here's Drake May tucking it. Not going to hit him there inside the five, <laughs> but give him the first down. That's a first down, and I'll tell Drake firsthand right there, you might want to slide maybe two <laughs> steps earlier. But again, talk about the offensive line. Uh, the pass rush just simply can't get there for the defense yet. And I think a lot of times we talk about the skill players, the running backs, the receivers, but that O-line needs a lot of love. They're doing a great job here early. Drake May with a gain of 11. Top 50 overall prospect in his recruiting class. Here's Henderson again, stopped near the line of scrimmage. That's Eugene Asante. The junior out of Virginia Westfield High School who really had starter talent the whole time but just wasn't able to get on the field but did start in that Orange Bowl lost to Texas A&M after Chaz Surratt decided to head and get ready for his NFL draft prep now Josh Henderson getting ready for a touchdown celebration touchdown Carolina it's Josh Henderson and again, a great job by the offensive line. I can't talk about them enough. You got to give the big uglies up front some love because they're opening up these holes for these running backs. It's just kind of have an easy walk-in touchdown there by Josh Henderson. Great job him capping off that really, really good drive. Josh Henderson, six carries, 33 yards, and a six-yard touchdown run. There to cap off the drive. And Noah Burnett, an opportunity here to split the uprights, and he won't want to watch that replay. That one goes awry, but nine plays, 47 yards. A couple of offensive series that went awry because of some good defensive play. The offense, high scoring last year, looking for more in 2021. And use code TV12 for up to 12 free meals. Refinancing with Splash saved me a lot of money. There were no application fees or any weird hidden fees. Now that I refinance with Splash, I know I'll finish paying off my student loans way sooner than later. I feel better about my student loans. Visit SplashFinancial.com today. Seven runs, six of them by Henderson, EJ. 
Yeah, and look, Henderson did a great job running behind his pads and just kind of taking what was there. The offensive line obviously opened up those holes for him to get north and south right now. But again, this jump cut, getting out of the gap, taking it in for a touchdown. Great job by him. Six-yard touchdown run there for Josh Henderson. Howell going deep down the near sidelines. Got his man, nice. and it is Josh Downs for the big play, the long gain. And we saw glimpses of that last year, late last year, in that Orange Bowl. Gain of 46. Yes, we did. And again, you're going to see Sam do a great job of disguising with his eyes. He looks to the left, gets the safety out of the way, and drops a complete dime there to Josh Downs. Great job of concentrating two hands on the football, securing that catch right there for a big game. There's Ty Chandler up the middle for gain of a few yards. But Josh Downs last season had seven catches. Four of them coming in that Orange Bowl. And talking to Phil Longo, said, look, we found him in the Orange Bowl. It's tough to see some folks opt out, but he got an opportunity, and Antoine Green might be having an opportunity this year as well. That's a touchdown for North Carolina as Howell hooks up with his wideout, the senior, Antoine Green. Just like that, Matt. You saw the footwork again with the ride uh, on the fake and the RPO and a perfectly placed football there for Antoine Green. Just to stick your hands out there and bring in a nice touchdown pass. Great job by Sam Howe scoring and answering real quick on this series. Saying he's one of the most improved players here in this spring. Everyone missed out on spring last year. Remember, Green had that horrific leg injury on the field at the Carrier Dome at Syracuse his freshman year. Looked like he might be breaking out to a great freshman season. And then that was a terrible setback, but now he's going to be one of the go-to guys coming up this season as Grayson Atkins puts that one through. Three plays, 66 yards, had that long pass play to Downs, and then the touchdown to Green. I've always been told, Matt, whenever you have one big play, it usually leads to another one. Why not take another <laughs> shot? And again, uh, Antoine Green did a great job of getting that left foot in, the concentration on the sideline, a perfectly placed football there by the big-time quarterback, Sam Howe. 6'2", 210-pound senior. Looking to cap off what has certainly been an, an up-and-down career. The down because of the injury, but more ups in his future coming up in 2021. Yeah, man, and he's going to get a lot of opportunities. Actually, all these receivers are. You don't have Bo Corrales playing. You don't have uh, uh, Shoffrey Brown playing. Those are also home run hitters. But these guys right here, they're going to take full advantage of these opportunities that they're getting today. Little pitch there to Elijah Green, the redshirt freshman on Roswell, Georgia. They call him the fastest running back in the room. And if the last name sounds familiar, well, there are a lot of Greens, a lot of people with the last name Green. But Victor Green, his father spent 10 years in the NFL as a defensive back, predominantly for the New York Jets. There's Green again. Yeah, and this is such great practice, not just for the offense, but for the defense. Uh, you talk, you know, talking with Coach yesterday, they didn't do any tackling drills. Obviously, want to keep everybody upright. Don't want any injuries during the spring. That's the last thing you want going into summer practice. But the defense is going to have to do a better job of coming up and making tackles. And they're going to certainly do that today. Colby Criswell after the first down. He was touched and the finger in the air from Asante saying, yep, yep, give me that sack. I know I can't bring down my teammate, but give it to me there. He, he is going to be a name that you are going to hear called time and time again, TFL for a loss of seven. And you know what? That's a great opportunity for tape when they get back in the film room 21 Elijah Green he has to see that and even though he has the RPO fake you got to come off that fake and just pick up Asante uh, right there on the uh, the fire and blitz you got to give your quarterback an opportunity to get the ball off sack for a loss of seven for Asante saw Blackwell there in motion here's Green with the handoff tackle on the play but there by Jaquarius Conley Came up from the back end, give him a gain of seven. And just speaking on Conley, Matt, I went back and watched Notre Dame. I went back and watched Texas A&M. Conley will come up and hit you. That guy has no fear. He will put his helmet right in your chin the legal <laughs> way and take you down with a big tackle. Great job by him right there. Was working at safety. Plays nickel, trying to get all their 
Athletes on the field at the same time. You saw Chriswell under duress had to flip that one off in the flat to green, but nothing doing. As there's that man, Eugene Asante, again. That's a loss of four. Yeah, and so many, so many great coaching moments here. And what Chris Wells is going to learn is when you see a linebacker right there with nobody to block him, you're running backs on the right side, you know you got a screen to the right. So you might either check a play or you might just try to tell your running back, hey, quicken up so I can get the ball out my hand so we don't have a sack here on third down. Mentioned Asante got his first start in the Orange Bowl last year after Chaz Surratt decided to opt out and get ready for his draft preparations. Wound up leading the team in tackles, career high 10 tackles there in that Orange Bowl. And talking to the coach, they said, look, he had starter talent the whole time. In fact, he was, was probably better at his position than maybe some of our other guys at their respective positions. Tried to work him in there on the field, played nickel at Virginia Tech, just wasn't working out. Now he's at his natural spot. And you're certainly going to hear his name called a lot coming up this fall. Sam Howell again directing the offense after that touchdown to Green. This one in and out of the hands to Antoine Green this time. Good defense there on that play. Be interested to see how many more snaps we get out of Sam Howell. You mentioned just wanting to leave healthy, and we've already seen enough from him over his first couple of seasons in what could be his last season with the Tar Heels. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be shocked if this is his last series, especially if he caps it off with a touchdown. But, Matt, I just want to go back to Eugene Asante. His career high in tackles was 10 versus Texas A&M in that Orange Bowl game. We got another bomb right here. Oh, great catch. That one is caught down the sideline. That's Emery Simmons, one of the guys that you said we got to pay attention to this season. And in this game, that's a gain of 44. A couple of big pass plays there, one to Downs and one to Simmons. Yeah, I love the fact that they're just taking shots down the field. <laughs> Sam knows he's not going to play long, so let me throw some bombs out here first, Coach. Again, Emory Sim was going up and apexing that football, really taking it from his own teammate right there. But, hey, as long as one of you guys catches it, it's good for the offense. Simmons getting better methodically every single day in practice, according to Phil Longo. A couple of pass plays of longer than 40 yards from the right arm of Sam Howell. So far, D.J. Jones with a minimal game there, bringing up second down and seven. But you lose a Daz Newsom, You lose a Ziami Brown, and you wonder, okay, who picks up the slack? But there's so much confidence there that, look, there's a lot of depth in this room. You might not have a, you know, a first-round or second-round talent sitting there right now, but they could be. There's just plenty of bodies there to absorb some of that lost production. Yeah, I mean, Matt, they just need opportunities. I mean, when you yep. lose those uh, those two great receivers in Brown and Daz Newsom, uh, these younger guys are going to lick their chops and get these opportunities, especially here early in this game today, because this is the time to do it. You know, coach is going to watch this tape for the next two months, three months going into August. So you better put some good stuff out there. Just look at Emory Simmons, the junior out of Parkton, North Carolina, Southview High School. Had an incredible receiving touchdown against Notre Dame late in the season. It was number two in the Sports Center top 10. Elevated to get a ball in the back of the end zone. Here's how on third down and nine, trying to evade his teammates and find another one, but out of bounds. And that'll bring up fourth down. Throwing the ball away, EJ. Something that the coaches have talked to him about. They know he's a tough guy, he might be the toughest guy on the team, but he doesn't need to prove it. Uh, with his health in mind. Yeah, and, and again, Des Evans doing a great job of applying pressure, getting Sam off his spot, out of the pocket. And when Sam does break the pocket, I talked to Coach Brown about it yesterday, he has to make good business decisions <laughs> as far as taking care of his body because the last thing that this Carolina team needs is him to hurt an ankle, a shoulder, or an elbow. They need him healthy. So the best thing for him to do sometimes is to chuck that ball into the second row and move on to the next play. Well, let's see where he chucks this ball here on fourth down and nine. That one a little high, but a flag on the play. As we might get a little handsy flag here from Ladeson DeAndre Hollins, who was in coverage. Placed at the spot. First down here for Sam Howell. See if he can end what could be his final drive in this spring game with a touchdown. 
Yeah, and look, that's a PI right there by Day Day DeAndre Hollins, but <laughs> I'm not mad at it. I think if you want to be aggressive, this is the time to do it. You know, why not try everything? You know, I was always proud of myself in the spring, man. Let's try stuff. You know, if we, we haven't done it in the season, let's give it a try now. We get a penalty, we move on, we learn from it. And off that's DJ Jones around the left side trying to fight his way to the goal line. Comes up about a yard shy as the rain now falling a little more heavily now. Here's a look at DJ Jones. And, and look, Matt, the first time DJ Jones gets touched is about four yards down the field. A great job by the slot receiver man, blocking man on and also Kamari Morales doing a great job of blocking too. That's just about attitude and want to as he runs in there for a touchdown. DJ Jones. And the one two to find the end zone and does 11 carries last year a few carries here in this spring game and a touchdown I, i'll tell you what matt somebody lit a fire in this offensive line in this tight end group because these guys are doing a great job the ones and the twos a great job of blocking downhill zone blocking running their feet getting that defense out the way tj jones was unavailable in that orange bowl game had foot surgery leading up to it He's healthy now and North Carolina after no touchdowns their first three drives the offense has been able to find the end zone three times in their last four drives is Grayson Atkins Ready for this long extra point that one is Emmanuel they'll break down all the storylines coming out of the ACC spring practices and games one hour special starts 7 Eastern on the ACC Network and the ESPN app. Sam Howell, by the way, five of 905 yards passing and a touchdown. None of them to Bo Corrales. Bo Corrales out today. One of a bunch of guys not playing today, either because they're being held out uh, because of a coach's decision, don't want to get him hurt, or they're unavailable because of injuries. You look at some of those names, there are going to be a lot of contributors. Storm Duck has been dealing with a lower body injury since last season. They hope he'll be ready to go. Joffrey Brown, the younger brother of Diami Brown, and Bo Corrales, who had a decision to make going into last season. Do I play through the injury or do I have surgery? Tried to play through his sports hernia and his lower abdomen. Missed seven of his final eight games. They hope he'll be ready to go and believe he will be this summer and into the fall. He's going to be a go-to guy for Sam Howell. Yes, he is, Matt. And I think that should give Sam a lot of confidence having Bo Corrales back. I think he was that third piece to what you had in De'Ami Brown and Daz Newsom in that 2019 season. Came up with 40 catches for 575 yards. But to me, he's a one-on-one -on -one mismatch because he's 6'3", he's 2'10". And most of these DBs can't handle guys like that. They try to put their hands on him. But I thought he did a great job two years ago. Rick May standing up into the pocket, finding his teammate Justin Olsen, the sophomore. Is he in? No, he's not. Olsen trying to point to the side. Look, there's my foot. There's where I stepped. We'll see if the replay confirms his suspicions. But a nice ball there from May. Yeah, well, look, Matt, I don't know if we have a red flag in a spring game, <laughs> but I think I'll throw it right here. I think he got, let's see. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think he got it in. He didn't get it in. But great effort right there. And again, that's what the coaches wanted to see. They wanted to see effort. They wanted to see guys finish plays. So again, Justin Olsen going out there. I'm sure he'll get another opportunity. Drake May hanging that ball out there for him. Played in seven games last year. Did not record a catch. Nearly had one here in the spring game. 14 to 6 is your score. Here's Drake May again. He's got mobility. For a guy who's 6'5", he can scoot near EJ. Yeah. Yes, he can. And look, as a young quarterback, you just don't want to make the bonehead mistakes. You don't want to try to force balls in there, you know, try to start seeing ghosts because that's where the coaches are going to start not to be able to trust you. As long as you don't turn the ball over and, you know, you see things open up in the offensive line, you take off and get what you can, you get down, you protect your body. Coaches are never going to be upset with that. In fact, that's a great play by a young quarterback. Matt Brown saying Drake Mays kind of playing like Sam did his first spring. Making some freshman mistakes, some high school mistakes, and will certainly be more acclimated come the fall as much of these guys vying for that backup quarterback role behind Sam Howell. Here's Caleb Hood on the handoff, breaks a tackle, and does screw it across on that fourth down for the first down, gain of seven. Yeah, and this is going to be a hard tackle that they want. You want to see 17 come up here and make that tackle, Chris Collins. But again, especially on fourth and three, understanding the down and distance, Caleb Hood does a great job of getting his body and center gradually low, keeps his hand on the dirt, and picks up enough for a first down conversion. 
Three receivers set here for Drake May. Hood again with the handoff, bottled up there at the line of scrimmage. A bunch of guys there in on that play. In terms of Kayvon Rucker, sophomore out of Hartwell, Georgia, guy who's going to be counted on as well. Yeah, Kayvon did a great job. They they called on him a lot last year, came up with 21 tackles, three for loss, and uh, did a good job of filling the gap, getting the running back down, moving on to the second down here. Second down and nine for quarterback Drake May and this offense. Touchdown run from Josh Henderson, a touchdown pass from Sam Howell, and now Caleb Hood gets to the outside. He's going to have a first down. He's bumped hard by his teammate Geo Biggers, but not before pick up a 12. Another great run by uh, the young running back, but hey, I got to get some love to Geo Biggers coming down and laying the boom. We like to call that laying the wood. Doing a great job from the safety spot. May, little play nice. action, finds his guy over the middle. And that is Kobe Pesor, the freshman. A couple of, a few freshman wideouts. Pesor, J.J. Jones, Gavin Blackwell trying to make some headway here in the spring. I'll tell you what, Matt, we're seeing the future develop right before our eyes. They talk so highly of these guys, specifically Kobe Pesor and J.J. Jones, the receivers, making big plays all spring long. Pesor nearly had that touchdown grab to follow up his catch. That was a great look there from May. Yeah, it was. And talk about a confident throw on the spray fade. Really put the ball in a position for him to come down and make the catch. Uh, Peso might have just missed it with uh, you know, half an inch with his hands. But I think he'll come down with that next one if he gets an opportunity. Let's see if he gets another opportunity here. Here's Drake May. Nice cut. That's Elijah Green there with that cut. The redshirt freshman out of Roswell, Georgia. Game you know, Matt, four. what I'm noticing from all these running backs is patience. None of these guys are trying to hit the hole too soon, and especially when you have a gap scheme run and you have uh, right guards and left guards pulling and they got to kick out the defensive linemen. They're all very, very patient, so when they see the hole open up, they hit it full speed and they keep their shoulder pads down and they run with some power. It was Blackwell in motion, May, though. The handoff up the middle. That is Elijah Green across the five and down to the three-yard line. Gain of five. Another great orchestrated drive by Drake May. Hopefully he can cap it off with either a field goal or a touchdown, but I think he's doing a great job of just taking the taking what the defense is, is giving him. You know, you saw the spray fade. It was a drop by Kobe Pesor, but I think overall Drake May looks really clean today. Drake May, top 50 overall prospect in his recruiting class. In his first spring, probably going to be a false start there as he tried to hand the ball off to Hood. Yeah, I, I hate it when this happened, Matt, because it's always on the quarterback. Anytime you have illegal procedures or bad snaps, it always comes back on the quarterback, and I'm sure Coach Longo is going to mention that to him when they get back to the film room, obviously right now, because he's doing a great job. But, you know, you just got to clean that up and just have a little bit more communication with your center. Now his father, Mark, played quarterback at North Carolina, 1986 to 1987, set some program records as well during his time at Chapel Hill. Now his son, oh boy. Yep. EJ, is that on the quarterback, too? Is that another quarterback? Nah, well, you know, is I don't think either one was on the quarterback. <laughs> I just think when you get to the film room, your offensive coordinator, QB coach, is going to put it on you. You know, you're, you're the one that's starting to play and finishing it. And you actually saw the center there kind of turn around and clap his hands up at Drake May. So it could just be some miscommunications on when the snap count is happening. But, hey, he's a freshman. Technically still should be in high school, Matt. So that's going to happen. And see, see if he tries to shove off two bad plays and try to make a good one. It is first and goal. Here, it should be first and goal. Yeah, from the nine. May looking to the end zone. Well, maybe it is fourth down and 12. We'll see if they turn that one over. There's Blackwell. Blackwell was, they were looking for Gavin Blackwell, a freshman out of Sun Valley High School, former high school teammate of Sam.
day might be done here in a wet, soggy Keenan Stadium. Do you know what's fine? Matt Schick along with EJ Manuel and a wet, soggy, drizzly day, but not doing a lot to dampen the excitement around this program. Coming off an eight win season and looking to challenge Clemson in that ACC race coming up this season. Take a look at Drake May. Had a couple of snap issues, false starts there as we now going to look at Chris Well with the handoff. What kind of challenges does that? does that present you've encountered those as well yeah I've definitely been in Sam's shoes as far as a starter and I've been in Drake man Jacoby uh, Jacoby shoes Chris Wells you know as a backup trying to kind of reach the expectation that you're given from the starting quarterback and as far as the two snap penalties or the snoot just two snap issues you just got to clean that up you know you got to sit down and kind of slow things down with your center talk to him and just say hey man we're going to be fine let's move forward you don't want one bad play to turn into two it's British Brooks there on the carry. Gain of five. As Kobe Criswell remains at quarterback. Yeah, I'm, I'm really interested to see Criswell get uh, a couple opportunities to throw the ball down the field, too. Just kind of get in a rhythm. I think when you get that first completion, Matt, that's usually how quarterbacks start to get hot. Criswell with the handoff and stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Bunch of guys in there on the act, including Power Eccles, who's living up to his first name. What a play by the freshman out of Charlotte. There he is, Matt. And look, when we asked about Power Eccles, Coach Bateman lit up. This guy's a former four-star athlete, number two inside linebacker per ESPN. He did a great job coming up, putting his helmet into the chin of the running back, stopping that play behind the line of scrimmage. And he is excited. I love it. Ra Ra Dilworth also uh, showing some Ra Ra there on that play. Let's welcome in Sam Howell, <laughs> the quarterback for North Carolina. His day is done. Touchdown pass, couple of completions of longer than 40 yards. Well, Downs and Simmons. Well, Sam, how would you uh, how would you characterize your your play there in the few series that you got? Thanks for being with us. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think we got off to a little bit of a slow start. Uh, you know, defense was making some good plays, but once we got settled in, we, we, had, we had some good plays. I thought the receivers did a good job, especially out here in the rain, man. They made some really good catches, so I'm, I'm overall pleased with how, how we performed today. Sam, talk a little bit about what you worked on from year one to year two and now year two going into year three. You know, when you go back and watch the film, I always try to say, hey, these one or two things I want to work on and perfect in the spring. So what are a few areas of emphasis for you this coming spring? Yeah, this spring, I think the big thing for me was just trying to get these young guys along and try to, I really kind of try to take all those guys under my wing and just try to spend as much time with those younger guys as, as, as I could and just try to develop those guys into players that can be able to play for us this fall. You know, everyone, everyone knows who, who we lost on the offensive side of the ball. You know, we lost two, run, two really good running backs, two really good receivers. So there's a lot of players going to step up and have big years this year. So just trying to develop those guys, develop chemistry, and really just try to take my leadership to the next level and try to lead, really lead this team. How would you assess the talent and potential of the guys being asked to fill those big shoes at those positions? Yeah, I think we got a lot of guys that are going to have really good years. Uh, you guys saw Josh Downs today. He made some really good plays. I think he's going to have a really, really good year. I mean, he made some plays in the bowl game last year, so he's already got some experience. I think he's going to be a really good player for us. Uh, Antoine Green, who, who caught a fade down here in the end zone, I think he's going to be another really good player for us. We've got Emory Simmons coming back. Uh, he made a really good uh, jump ball catch over there. Um, so, and then we got Bo Corrales, who people really haven't seen in a, in a long time because of the injury last year. But we got a lot of guys that I think are going to have a really good year this year. Sam, on the defensive side of the ball, you obviously go up against those guys each and every practice. Who has stood out to you this past spring? Yeah, the, them defense guys look good. I think the first thing I noticed is the D-line. There's a lot of young guys playing over there, but they look good, man. Um, I think our D-line is going to be the best it's been since I've been here. I think the DBs are really taking it to their next level. Uh, I think kind of... They haven't played great the past two years, and I think they kind of have a chip on their shoulder, and they have they came out with a lot of energy this spring. There's a lot of guys over there that's having really good spring, so I'm excited for our defense. Sam, you've had uh, really a record-breaking early career there at North Carolina, and now as the expectations go up for this program, there's a lot of hype surrounding you personally. You mentioned that there's people mentioned the word Heisman, number one pick, all these things. How do you deal with... myself uh, so that's kind of my mindset about all that stuff you know nothing 
you know, I just try to do everything I can for this team and try to help our team win games because if we don't win games, then none of that stuff is going to happen. So I just really try to give my team everything I have and just try to focus on, on my team, not really focus on myself. I think that stuff will kind of take care of itself uh, if we have a good year. So that's kind of my mindset on all that. And Sam, Congratulations. How do you, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, well, I just wanted to ask, how do you plan on just kind of getting your teammates' mindsets to stay locked in, man? Because obviously last, last year you guys were still the hunters, and I think this year you're going to be the hunted. I mean, everybody knows you're going to be really good. You're coming back. So how do you get your teammates to lock in and make sure they stay humble out there? Yeah, I mean, we talk about it all the time. Uh, you know, we're, we're at a point now with our program where it, we're, we're going to get everybody's best. I think the past two years probably hasn't been like that. We didn't really have a whole lot of respect nationally and in our conference. So, I think, like you guys said, we are the hunting now. We just got to be able to be consistent um, and know that every single game, no matter who we're playing, we're going to get their best shot. So, I mean, I think we had a couple games last year where we, we slipped up and let, let some teams that we were better than beat us. So I think we got to make sure we just stay consistent and keep, keep our process the same every single week, and I think we'll, we'll have a chance. Sorry we uh, made you hang out in the rain without a jacket for the last <laughs> few minutes, but thanks for spending some time with us. We appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate thanks, it, guys. Sam. Yep. Sam Howell, the best in college football and the man that's going to lead this North Carolina offense next season. You mentioned the 68 passing touchdowns over the first two years, the most through the sophomore year in ACC history. And we talked to Mac Brown, EJ, before the game. And earlier this week, he said, look, I, I expect him to have a good season. If he does, I expect him to leave, and I expect him to be potentially the number one pick. It's really a fascinating look at the, the transparency and the honesty between a coach and a player saying, I hope you're not here, essentially, because that means we had a good year. Yeah, Matt, most coaches, they don't want their star guy to start thinking about the draft, especially before the season. But look, everyone knows this guy's going to be a top quarterback, whether he decides to come out his junior year or his senior year. The thing that stands out the most to me outside of the accuracy, outside of the, the arm strength, the, the ad lib ability when he breaks the pocket is his, his mentality. It's his maturity. You know, when you have a, have a chance, even the way he answered these questions today, he's just such a calm guy, uh, never seems like he's rattled, just does a great job overall, and what a great leader for this program. Media savvy, too. I asked him a question. He began his answer with, that's a good question. He made me feel good. Made I you like feel him good. More. Yeah, I mean, that's really <laughs> what this I didn't is get all that, about. so I got to keep working. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> As we hear and wait on the flag here, one thing about that is Phil Longo said, they are working on next season, but they also spend some time on NFL preparation with Sam Howell. I imagine that's something that wasn't foreign to you, but I listened to that. I said, well, how does that help you and this team if you're focused on the NFL with him? I thought his answer was pretty good. Yeah, and look, when I heard Coach Longo say that, man, I was like, if I had a son, I, I would start thinking about trying to get him to go to Carolina just because when coaches understand that, hey, the main goal for a lot of these kids, of course, is to get their, uh, you know, their degree and whatever they're studying, but these guys want to go and play at the, the highest level in the NFL. So what better way than, you know, just to prepare your guy, not just for what they have this coming season and his junior year, but also give them opportunities to work toward an NFL career. And then also I think it puts the onus on the young quarterbacks, Jacoby Criswell and Boaz and, and even Drake May. You know, it kind of sets the tone for what the expectation is in the quarterback room at Carolina. Yeah, I like what uh, Phil Longo said. So we're going to do whatever we can to help these guys beyond our program as Drake May picks up a, a gain of 11 on the run and the slide and just saying, I, I feel as much as their coach after they leave as I do when they're here. So he's been to a bunch of quarterback weddings, guys that he coached, Phil Longo yep. has, and families come back. And it's not just about worrying about how North Carolina does this year. It's about how these guys do when they are done. That's a big reason why they're here. Drake May, a little underthrown there, but we're going to have a flag in the end zone. That flag on Obi Aguna. Yeah, and actually, thinking of this play, uh, Coach Bowden, uh, <laughs> long time great coach, used to always tell us in the quarterback room, hey, look, if you don't overthrow a receiver, if anything, underthrow him, because then you get this. You get a pass interference <laughs> call, and now we get we possibly get the ball well, at least 10 yards ahead. I think in the NFL, they would have marked that thing on the goal yeah. line, but nonetheless, hey, you know, a great job by Drake May, at least giving the receiver an opportunity to go up and try to make a catch. J.J. Jones was the intended receiver. They will move that to the 19. As Drake May continues to push the ball down the field. British Brooks to his left. Brooks does get the handoff, finds a gaping hole. Yeah. And nearing the 10-yard line. That offensive line, again, continuing to do work, gain of seven. I'm telling you, Matt, look, anytime you see Big 51 Wyatt Tunnel coming across 
on a kick out block, but he has nobody to block, and that's a good thing because that means there's no one there. Running back does a great job. British Brooks putting his foot in the ground, getting as much as he can before he gets tackled. Here's a look at Wyatt Tunall, the sophomore to Chester High School in Chester, South Carolina. Blackwell in motion. May nice pulls forward. it. Now he's going to tuck it, and he's going to. He would have gotten hit in a real game. Uh, that's coming up to make the play was Ra Ra Dilworth again. Ra Ra Dilworth, one of those guys that you're going to have to pay attention to inside linebacker position. That position does a lot here in this program, and they are going to find ways to get him on the field this year as a freshman. Yeah, man, he actually reminds me a lot of Telvin Smith, a young Telvin Smith. Look how lean he is, a guy that can run sideline to sideline. And just a vicious tackling. Obviously, right there off the RPO scheme, scrapes off and comes and makes a tackle, or what would have been a tackle on Drake May. Rucker on the tackle there, the sophomore. 21 tackles last year, three TFLs, started one game, played in 10. And again, another work, look at Dilworth. So much young talent here. We'll, yeah. we'll talk recruiting here in a little bit, but these early enrollees, these guys who come out of high school and can really step in and play some sort of role with this North Carolina team. Some have to shed some weight, get in a little better shape, learn some positions, but certainly can't question the talent. Here's May out in the flat to Brooks. Finds his way down to the 10. Yeah, and I'm, I'm just so impressed with the, the young guys, the guys that are early enrollees. I, I didn't get a chance to, to leave college or excuse me, leave high school early to try to enroll, but I can only imagine uh, the pressure, you know, you're still technically a high school senior in age, but you're out there playing with grown men. Your body's not necessarily all the way developed, but these guys are certainly holding their own, doing a great job. How can you tell it's a spring game? That was fourth down, and I never mentioned it. We'll collect the, <laughs> we'll collect the Emmy as we go out the door. Turnover on downs. Mac Brown, everyone staying dry, trying to. Best and most memorable stories that have made the soon-to-be ACC NFL draftees so successful on and off the field. 9.30 Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Certainly not Chamber of Commerce weather in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. I live in Charlotte. We've had no rain for like two and a half weeks. And, of course, it rains today on the <laughs> spring game for North Carolina as we take a look at some of the future of the Tar Heels for 2021. Here's Elijah Green on the outside for a gain of five. 14 to six Tar Heels over Carolina. So we enter the fourth quarter. And we mentioned there's a dozen early gamer in this spring season. Just try to figure out how to go to college and be a college student here, and then we'll figure it out as we go on. Yeah, and, and what Coach Brown is doing, man, he's building a program. You know, he doesn't need these guys to necessarily be starters right now as, you know, when the fall comes up. You know, again, a lot of these dudes are still supposed to be high school high school seniors. So uh, what better way when you hear your head man say, hey, man, just relax, have fun, learn how to practice, learn how to take care of your body, learn how to go to the training table, learn how to go to tutoring, like all those small things that a lot of these student athletes have to deal with and have to become accustomed to. And you saw some of those names in the stars, five stars, four stars, and three stars. The recruiting profile has been raised under Mac Brown. Back-to-back -to -back top 20 classes, had a number 12 incoming class here for 2021. The top 13 rated recruits in this class are all from the state of North Carolina. As Drake May on the keeper, check that. That is Jefferson Boaz down the near Big side, man. fooled everybody for a gain of 38 and the touchdown. The red shirt freshman running it in for six. Did a great job selling the fake, riding the fake all the way down and obviously having, well, I don't know, Matt, that might've been a touchdown. <laughs> Technically you can't hit the quarterback, but nonetheless, Jefferson did a great job of taking that one home. And coach loved this guy, six, six and a half, 245, probably the biggest guy in the group. And as long as he continues to fall in, I'm certainly he'll have an opportunity at some point when Sam moves on. Multi-sport athlete at East Surrey High School, Pilot Mountain, North Carolina, played basketball, Baseball was a pitcher, played first base, averaged a double-double on the hardwood in basketball. High school senior in football, completed 74% of his passes. 
4,600 yards, 65 touchdowns, six picks. I mean, it was, it was the Boaz show. There yeah, it really was. It really was. And, and again, Matt, you just talk about these young guys. Boaz, he's a retro freshman. Drake May, a true freshman, an early enrollee. There's so many guys. You look at the future of this Carolina football team, really what Coach Brown and his staff have built here. Uh, and also, I just want to hit on Keyshawn Silver and Javari Ritzy. When you yeah. see single digits at D-line, you know they're dogs, Matt, <laughs> because you only have that stuff when you're a confident guy. So really cool to see those guys get some action as well. Well, speaking of confident guys on that defense, as we see the defense make a play yet again, Alex Noble's on the stop. One of the guys we didn't see today, but we'll see plenty of in the fall, Jeremiah Gimmel, the senior out of Georgia. They call him the general, and he's uh, spending some time here with us. Jeremiah, thanks for spending some time with us. What do you see from this from this defense here in the spring? I mean, what I've been seeing um, since the beginning of the spring, I mean, the young guys are just flying around. I mean, they know sometimes, I mean, with a learning curve with Coach Bateman, we got a lot of multiple plays that we call, and there's a lot of things they have to learn along spring. But and sometimes, usually with freshmen, you see them jogging around, and they're, maybe they're not getting to the ball too quick. But that's nothing that I've seen all spring with either Ritzy, Keyshawn, there's been Power, Harara, I mean, Boykins. I mean, all the freshmen have been flying around making plays all spring. Jeremiah, you've been there now for four years. You've obviously had the rough season before Coach Brown got there, and obviously things have gotten progressively better. How how has the, the, the program changed since Coach Brown and his staff have taken over? I mean, I think it's just the atmosphere in the weight room with Coach Hess, him coming in, the atmosphere of practice, and the atmosphere of the locker room. I mean, all the guys love each other. All the guys compete. We know on the, when we go to the game field and we go to practice, we're going to be competitive. We're going to be chippy. But, I mean, when we come to the locker room, we love one another. And, I mean, I think that's the biggest difference that I've seen with Coach, Brex, Coach Mount, Br Mac Brown staff coming in. We were talking to uh, your defensive coordinator, Jay Bateman, and he mentioned something that you did and the attitude you had after the loss in the Orange Bowl. And they came in, and they saw that they wondered how the team would be. And you were talking to the team about how unacceptable it was with how the team played. Can you walk us through what your emotions were after that game and why it was so important for you to stress to the team that that was unacceptable? Well, for me, I, I mean, for me after the game, with everything I've seen, I mean, I saw guys were flying around making plays in I mean, you saw, everybody in the nation saw we were right there neck and neck with Texas A&M. And everybody said before the game, we didn't have a shot. There was no chance we were going to be able to win. But when I came back in the locker room, that's when I sat down before we break the huddle. I saw guys sad. I saw guys upset. But I wanted them to let them know that that wasn't a negative loss that we have. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we still lost the game, but I've seen things out there on the field that nobody in the country thought we were going to be able to do. The running backs were running hard. The guy, Eugene Usante, didn't start one game in his entire career, and we went out went out there for the orange ball and played his butt off. I mean, I mean, that's something. That's some of the stuff I brought to the locker room. I didn't want the guys to go home with a sad hang in their head. I had to let them go with a positive mindset for next season. And Jeremiah, just hearing you talk about that, man, that's the leadership of a champion. So happy for you and keep that thing rolling, man. But what's your expectation of this defense moving forward now that you guys are basically in year three of Coach Brown's era? Well, my expectations for me, I want to be the number one defense in the ACC. And after we accomplish that, I want to be the best defense in the country. I mean, I think we have all the tools. We have all the parts coming back. I mean, we lost Chad Surratt, but with Eugene coming in and playing so well in that role, I think we just gained depth in all the other positions at cornerback, at defensive line, at our safeties. I think we just improved all around from last year. Jeremiah Gimmel didn't play today. Does it bother you not playing today? I mean, you're, you're a competitor. Is it tough to watch? I mean, it's tough to watch, but at the same time, I'm so into the I'm so into the spring game. I mean, I love cheering the guys on. I have no problem being out there cheering the guys on. Well, we're looking forward to actually watching you play again in the fall. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thanks, Jeremiah. See you. So, Jeremiah Gimmel, leading returning tackler, more than 2,000 snaps. He said, look, we're not, we're not going to play guys with 2,000 snaps uh, here in this game. There's no reason to, to do it as we see Will Crowley there on the reception gain of five yeah and, and just to hit on Gimmel Matt when you turn the table on and watch this defense he sets the tone he's the heartbeat of what that Jay Bateman defense is going to look like so it's a great opportunity and also just great to hear him talk about that leadership aspect that's how you create champions I know when I was at Florida State we had guys like I said Telvin Smith Christian Jones guys that spoke up Lamar LaMarcus Joyner that just spoke up and kind of set the identity for our team not just our defense so it's great to have him coming back for his senior year
Yeah, Jay Bateman saying there's everything you want in a football player. It's Jeremiah Gimmel. The name to remember again in his final season with North Carolina. Going deep to the end zone, and that is nearly intercepted by Val Edwards, the sophomore out of Raleigh, North Carolina. They're in to make that play. <laughs> you see the you see the coaches on the sideline giving Val some hard times because I guarantee you when they get to the film room they're gonna say man how do you drop a pick but look Boaz got to get that ball out there it's a little short and I know I talked about it earlier as far as a receiver coming back for it but you got to give a guy an opportunity because you're technically throwing in double coverage right there but Val Edwards you got to come down with the pick man got to catch the money man got to catch the money intended for Landon Stevens who's a high school teammate of Boaz so. Trying to hook up there. Here's Caleb Hood and the defensive front. Making its presence known late in this spring game. No game. Yeah, the defense is doing a great job of attacking at the line of scrimmage. Uh, obviously, Jake Harkel World. Uh, and, and actually, Coach uh, Bateman talked about him yesterday. A walk-on linebacker, a guy that's going to be a tough-nosed dude, uh, kind of the, the centerpiece for that second or third unit, doing a great job out here and the opportunities that he's getting. Jefferson Boaz feeling some heat gets that one out that one's incomplete and there will be a flag on the play we'll take a quick break here and come back with more of the spring game here straight ahead after this call. All right as the series continues after the series we'll Take a quick time out Tar Heels with a two point lead over Carolina. It's a weird sentence to say. It is a spring game. Mad chick along with EJ Manuel. As we take a look at Mac Brown, who just loved one of the conversations we had with him about expectations for this program. He says, I want people being mad when we lose. That means we're doing something right. Boaz overthrows his intended receiver. He was looking. For Jeffrey Saturday, if the name sounds familiar, yes, it is the son of Jeff Saturday, ESPN. Yeah, and Jefferson did a great job of handling a bad snap right there and getting that ball up and giving Jeffrey Saturday an opportunity to go out for a catch as you see him lay out there, selling all out for the touchdown pass, <laughs> possible <laughs> touchdown pass in the spring game, Matt. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Look at it. that hair. Look at that hair. You can't even put <laughs> half of that inside the helmet. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, and these are vital reps for these young guys. I mean, granted, some of these guys are walk-on, some of these guys are freshmen, but again, just invaluable opportunities for them to learn and make mistakes because this is the film that you want to show these guys in the next two months before the summer practices come around. Getting back to the expectations conversation with Mac Brown, he said, yeah, my wife Sally said, Mac, you screwed up again. <laughs> You got everybody excited, and now people are getting mad when you lose. You just had to do that, didn't you? He's been, he's been in places before where that has happened. You raised the bar, but he said, look, I want people being mad. If people are mad when we lose to Florida State, that's a good thing. Right. That, that means we're getting closer. Yeah, exactly. And look, Coach Brown talked about the principles that he want his team to be about, you know, and just graduating guys, making sure that guys understand the right way to play the game, communicating with his players, the trust and the respect, common purpose. Uh, great, great interception right there. Great interception right there. Christopher, Christopher Holiday. Holiday, yeah. who is, he's the son of Corey Holiday, who's the assistant athletic director of football operations. And Christopher makes the pick. Perfect ACT score, 1570 on his SAT, and holding up the belt. Yeah, and, and honestly, Matt, that was a great pick. I mean, pretty much caught that thing like a receiver over the shoulder, a great way to cap off uh, what, what I think is a really, really good last scrimmage, last spring game as these guys look like everybody's healthy moving forward into summer camp. Mac Brown, there's the smile. Everybody's healthy. Everybody wins. Even in weather like this, we'll put a bow on the North Carolina spring. Coming up. I've traveled all over the country talking about